Hi, I'm Andy Neuherz, Director of Vertical Solutions for Western Europe. Today I want to talk to you about our view of Internet of Things. So you will learn what Volvo thinks of the direction regarding Internet of Things. If you want to get further details, of course you can check always on enterprise.worldwide.com. What will be the agenda? We will talk first about the trends and the challenges we see in the Internet of Things technology. And second, I want to present to you what our view on the solution for Internet of Things will be. Now, Internet of Things is coming. There is no discussion about it. More and more things need to become connected. So you see on the left part, PCs, smartphones, and physical devices like buses and the like. And below you see all the residential office buildings and the like. And you can imagine everything in there needs to be connected. On the right part, you see the trend on mobile connectivities on the technology regarding Internet of Things. That was a research done by ABI Networks, as you can see there. The trend is dramatic, a lot more connections just on mobile connectivity as one part. Now, how do we think what currently is happening into the market? All those devices which are connected into the topic Internet of Things are more or less isolated machine-to-machine -machine type of connections. Okay? So you can see here either the mobile phones or the video surveillance or the traffic management or others, and all of those are in their separated environment. So you can compare it on the right side, what you see here on the slide, different islands without connections, right? So that's what we see currently going on. Now, if you go forward here, you need connectivity. We know that already from the normal communications in an enterprise network or in a service provider area, and anywhere and any time type of connectivity. If you relate that to the Internet of Things, what do you see? You have a complex network architecture. You have the different type of devices called things. And either you have them wired or wireless connected. And then you have your network infrastructure with the different devices, routers, switches, firewall, modem, whatever, connecting back to the management infrastructure of the solution provider. Now, our view here is that those type of connections need to be in a more simple environment and connection. So we do think there is probability to make it more efficient. So the different communications, what you will have, if you have them separated, it will provide a more challenged infrastructure. So our view is the view of the network connectivity needs to become a converged multi-service infrastructure, and if you look around, it needs to be in a, let's say, environment adaptability so that you have the possibility to have different temperature, rain, and whatever type of connections uh, not influencing the connectivity of your devices. So if you look at one of the most typical infrastructure, what you probably already are aware of, is the advanced metering infrastructure, what you can see on the left side. That's a dedicated siloed infrastructure. You have the residential area, the blue houses on the bottom. You have your meters. You have the network which takes the connections to the meters and holds back the traffic to a distribution and then to the power plant infrastructure and data center to do according things what needs to be done on your metering infrastructure. Okay? If you look at that one, a dedicated silo infrastructure, it's the basic infrastructure. It's cost, uh, let's say, a big money on this one, and it is limited to just this one industry. In our case, it's the power industry. On the other side, if you look on a residential view or on a business view, you have more than just power you get into your building. You have probably your fire alarms, you have your gas, you have your water, you have a lot of different devices which you could make internet capable. What does that mean? You probably have different cabling systems, one for your uh, smoke alarms, one for your electricity, one for your gas pipes, and so on. Now, if you compare that to the history, what we have seen in networking so far, it's the same stuff we had in the, let's say, early 
20,000 year that you had a different voice infrastructure in the company and you had a different networking infrastructure. Those already converged. And the similar approach we see here, if you see that separately, that you need to address. So how can we address that? Second part of our uh, presentation today is regarding our view on the solution. If you look at this slide here, we have already discussed on the left side, you see the different siloed, isolated machine-to-machine -machine communication fields, just to uh, few the four different ones here, and of course it's not limited to do just those four, and all the communication you see uh, displayed in the zero and ones is basically digital communication, so no difference, and you will not identify on the data if it's coming uh, or belonging to the video surveillance or if it's belonging to traffic management and the like. And on the right area, you see the wide area to Internet of Things technology. What do you have there? You have the management, you have the analysis or reporting what people will use, depending on the information you have and the reporting decision making, and of course the remote access to control and make uh, smart decisions on your infrastructure. So what we would think, or what would be probably a better explanation, would be the machine to the matrix communication, right? So M2M in a different synonym, what we have mentioned here, meaning the second M matrix. How do we see that, and why do we see that? A, if we separate that and look first at the part which is reflected to the end user, either residential or business uh, owner, what you will have is you will have a converged gateway. And the gateway needs to have connectivity A to the building infrastructure, whatever the things will be. And here it needs to support the different technologies, A in a wired and in a wireless technology. So to name a few would be, for example, power line communication, RS different standards, SIGBee as different type of uh, wireless technology, WLAN and the like. And to back all the information which is collected from the things on the left side, you need to have different technologies as well. Either the typical GPRS low speed or up to LD technology into the wireless uh, WAN technology, different type of fixed line connectivity, either E1 up to gig E and the like. And of course, broadband power line connectivity as well as an option. So this device is basically the gateway between the access technology and the backhaul technology for the machine to the matrix communication. If you have that in a ruggedized equipment, meaning supporting harsh environment, you do not really bother if there is a little bit humidity or if it's a little bit too hot for normal operation devices, what you normally would use in your enterprise or in your home office. And on the other side, if you have all those things integrated in the one, generally speaking, you will reduce the total cost of ownership for those infrastructure providers in that technology field. If we go further, why do we think it needs to be the technology I just mentioned before, the smart technology or smart uh, connectivity, how I have been lying out before, here what we see, multiple wireless solutions, and I, uh, let's say, explain that one into the technology areas, home office, home automation, and the Internet of Things technology uses different wireless and, let's say, more limited wireless connectivity, what you normally would know into an enterprise communication or home office compared to your WLAN to mention here SIGBee as one of the standards or different radio frequency technologies. On the other side, as mentioned before as well, the power line communication goes A into the home office, so communication to your smart meters via the power line, and B, the possibility to backhaul via power line and make the power line from your office or from your building back to the power plant management system over the power line as well as one of the options. And that's uh, mentioned because that's a complete different technology people normally would be used in a communication and business and home environment so far. Unified management is the other part, what we do think needs to come into that area. You already see in the top of the uh, both pictures, left and, and right side, the typical cloud. 
what does it re represent? It's pre representing the management system of the different, on the left side, silos for the different things connected or on the right side in a combined environment. And uh, we have on purpose put in here the cloud representing the capabilities and the uh, future options how we would see here, meaning that it goes into a unified environment so it doesn't matter what kind of devices on the lower end are connected to the management system. And because it is represented as a cloud, we think it can become unified in the sense of that it doesn't matter who is providing the connectivity from the sinks back to the back office, it's in the cloud and hence can be combined for different providers or for different systems. If we take this one one step forward, and my mouse is not too sensitive here for controlling the slides. If we go for the traditional solution, the cloud basically is the data center, right? So there's nothing new in that concept. We have said the ratchetized gateway to connect the different things back to the data center via the different communication capabilities. But if you now picture that into the cloud, A, it can combine all the different technologies from a sense of providers in managing it, but because it's in a cloud technology, it can already be virtualized. What does that mean? You have one big virtualized data center, and on those different data centers, you can have different providers taking their management of their dedicated things. So if you look at the Volvo solution on the right side, with the cloud data center virtualized, you have different providers, virtual uh, business environment monitoring system. One would be pro probably the provider taking care for the smoke detection. The second one would be the one uh, responsible for the electricity. The third one would be the one, for example, for the water system. Or if you think it further or spin it further, you could have different energy providers, electricity providers, and all of them working off the same infrastructure into the access, gathering the data, and into the management being in the cloud data center to be able to make the smart decisions, reporting, and the like, what we have been mentioning before. Now, how will that work, and what will we provide to the infrastructure and to the companies using that? We have, of course, this typical layered approach in a networking environment, so there's nothing new here. What you have on the bottom, or what you see on the bottom there, are the different type of devices called things, the metering devices and the like. So those need to have the communication module, and we have been talking about those type of uh, different communication uh, protocols being used in that area, wired or wireless. Now, our gateway, what we suggest to use there, will have an API. It's an open API, so that provides the capability for the providers, either the electricity provider or the infrastructure provider, to directly connect to the Internet of Things gateway and make smart decisions and uh, getting value added information and protocol uh, control over the infrastructure so you can get with that open platform uh, additional information and applications to drive that infrastructure from a gateway point of view. For the backhauling infrastructure, it will be like we mentioned before, either on the power line, uh, wireless, uh, GPS and the like, or a normal IP backbone type of infrastructure, uh, talking to the management system. At the management system or the backhaul, the cloud, what you have been seeing before, you will have a head-end device that's basically a larger type of routing device which has the capability to collect the data and provides the uh, connectivity to do a uh, big range of uh, Internet of Things type of gateways into the access area. And here as well, backhauling to the management platform, to the data center, you will have an open eye as well and uh, open API as well. This provides then additional interfaces and connectivity capabilities to different management modules, to the different providers uh, of the energy, of water, of alike, to have access to the collect data like billing and the like, and getting with this data the reporting and the analysis to provide control and better management of the infrastructure and the resources to the user. 
So if we take this one and uh, map it out in the way that we have this virtualized infrastructure, what I have mentioned before, so you will have the first solution, for example, the building management system uh, with the infrastructure defined before, the applications coming from a third party provider, the data management like I discussed and mentioned with the data center storage and processing capability, the network infrastructure, what you see here in that case, it would be a wireless infrastructure, the gateway uh, to connect to the different type of things. So that would be the siloed approach what we can uh, or what we see already implemented nowadays. But if we implement what we have been showing in the slides before, what you will see here is that that part of the infrastructure, the middle part, will be the shared infrastructure. That shared infrastructure connects with open interfaces to the devices and to the applications. And with that, you can use for the building management, you can use the same infrastructure for the advanced metering solution, you can use the same infrastructure for a smart home. What does that provide you? From an infrastructure point of view, it drives the cost down because it will be shared infrastructure. Uh, from the user point of view, it provides you uh, only one device, simpler management and simpler capabilities. And from the infrastructure providers or the resources providers, it even can merge into a, let's say, Internet of Things type of operator because it's the same concept behind what you know nowadays from carriers and the like. With that, as the final slide, I do think I could provide you with a good overview on our solutions and view regarding the Internet of Things on the way forward. If you want to know more and have further detailed uh, explanation and discussion with our people, feel free to go to enterprise.worldwide.com and we can take it from there. Thank you and have